Welcome to the Divine Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Roche, and together we are walking the path of discovering your true self and the alignment with your soul. Through these conversations, you will experience a deeper level of connection with yourself and the universe, and most importantly, you will trust in your spiritual journey ahead. Let's begin. Welcome back to another episode of the Divine Connection Podcast. Today, we are diving into a conversation all around spiritual protection. And this, I think, is such an important conversation to have. I think that this is something that many people go through, many people ask about, many people are just curious about. And it is important, especially as we're talking about connecting with spiritual energies, about developing our abilities. We have to talk about spiritual protection. So let's dive into the question that was submitted. So the question says, I'm having a lot of dark energy attacks and I'm so confused whether they are a result of using Oracle cards or not. Please let me know if possible. Should I be doing spiritual protection before doing energy work? Is there spiritual protection that needs to be taken before meditation? Do Oracle decks have good or dark energy depending on their type and themes? All great questions, all important to dive into. So let's begin. So first of all, I want to talk about the Oracle decks real quick. And the short answer is yes, Oracle decks and even beyond Oracle decks, like any divination tool that you use can potentially lead you to connecting with lower vibrational energies that you do not want to be connecting with. So if you are using any form of divination tool out there that exists, you have to be super aware. You have to be uh, mindful. You have to do the step-by-step process to stay protected and stay connected only to divine light and love, which I will share later on in this episode. But that's the first thing to just simply be aware of that any object or tool that is being used for divination can potentially connect with lower vibrational energies. And I'm going to share with you how to avoid that. But first of all, let me just answer that real quick. And I do feel that that's probably what's happening here with regards to the dark energy attacks and just overall what's going on. It sounds like there was, for lack of a better way of explaining it, an energy leak where there was a leak and there was an entry point and that's what, that's what's going on. But the good news is that we can clear that out. You can protect yourself. You can shift your energy. And, and that's something that's important for everyone to know that everyone has the ability to do that. And so I'm going to walk you through that process in the episode today. So When it comes to just also a quick thing, I mentioned that any sort of divination tool can lead to that connection to lower vibrational energies. That's also the case. That's why it's so important to be mindful of which healers or psychics you work with and knowing, you know, their integrity and knowing are they doing the work or doing the practices that are important to stay in the highest truth, the highest integrity in the energy of divine light and love. So that's just something to also be aware of when you're working with people is to also just be mindful of what they are, they are channeling and what they are connecting to. And if they are doing the practices that are necessary to keep them protected. Okay. So just an FYI for everyone out there, not to scare you away from people, but just, just be mindful, just be aware. So the first step, and I'm going to right now, I want to walk through the steps to help just reset your energy. So for anyone who might be in a space like this, where they feel like they are having energetic attacks or something's going on, let's reset. The first thing we got to do is reset. So step one is that you need to stop using your Oracle card decks or whatever it is that you've been using. Whatever you've been doing that is something that's outside of you, you have to stop using it right now. So whether that's a person, whether that's a card deck, whether that's a whatever other kind of tool, got to step away from that for now. I'm not saying that you got to throw it in the trash. You don't have to do that, but we got to step away from it and put it aside and stop using it for now. Okay. That's step one. Step two is that you have to focus on coming back to your connection of divine light and love directly with the divine, directly with God. 
And I also do see Archangel Gabriel coming forward. So he is coming forward right now. And he's like, and I can support you with this. So with Archangel Gabriel or di directly with the divine, with source energy or, you know, combination of both, but removing everything away and simply focusing on your direct connection with the divine, with God, with Archangel Gabriel, and also your soul, your divine being. I remember back in, when was it? It was 2019, I think. Uh, I had something happen where I was in connection with someone who was not good for me and who was very disempowering, which I didn't realize at the time. And who now looking back, I feel like was connected with different vibrational energies. And so I was being influenced in that way. And I remember that when I stepped away and I finally was like, okay, it's something going on here and kind of like made this disconnection from that person. The first thing that I needed to focus on was coming back to myself, to my true self and to my connection to the divine. And so every day what I did is I focus on connecting with my higher self and connecting with the light and love of God and just felt that energy coming in, like almost connecting out my crown chakra and then filling my body up with divine light and love energy and just practicing what that felt like to come back to myself, come back to my connection. And so in whatever way, whether you want to do that similar practice or you have a different way that you feel led to do, but the point is that you are removing external influences and you are focusing on your internal connection. That's the most important thing right now. And like I said, Archangel Gabriel is coming forward. So I do feel com him coming in as a support with this, but it's really about you and the divine between you and God, you and source, you and, you know, whatever you call your creator, whatever it is, but that is the most important connection to be focusing on right now. The third step after that is going to be about building up your spiritual strength and your spiritual power and understanding that you hold that spiritual strength and spiritual power and that in you building it back up, it's almost like building back up the fortitude and the stamina and the energy to stand strong in your truth and in your power and in, and in who you are. And when you build that back up, it's going to be much easier for you to then hold boundaries, energetic boundaries with different vibrational energies, and also for you to be discerning and also for you to be able to just simply trust in yourself in your ability to discern and trust in yourself in your ability to push away or remove any lower vibrational energies that might be around in your field. But you can't do the spiritual empowerment part without first connecting to yourself. So that's the, the the secondary step. And the third one, like I said, building that up. And so the way that you can build up your spiritual strength and spiritual power is as you start to uh, practice what I shared, that intention and that focus of coming back into your own energy and your divine connection, you're also then practicing what it feels like to be in your energy, to be in your body, focusing on your chakras, bringing in energy to your chakras, bringing, bringing energy into your aura. So you're solely focused on your own energy. You're solely focused on what it feels like to be in alignment and in connection with your true self. And from there, you're starting to, like I said, build up this trust and build up this familiarity with your own self of what your energy feels like, of what feels what what it feels like to be within a state of balance within your own energy, in a state of empowerment, in a state of a higher vibrational frequency. So all of these things you are becoming familiar with, you are learning, you are understanding what the energy of integrity for the highest good, what it feels like. And you're just simply almost memorizing it or being familiar with it so that now moving forward, anything that doesn't align with that, you can feel and know right away, right away. And it's crazy how our perspective can change. And I recently, not super recently, but maybe in the last, I don't know, three to five months or so, I came across a really popular 
Instagram person uh, who had many hundreds of thousands of followers and who very like their energy was very really, really draws you in and really you're like oh she has something important to say oh like what is she saying what is that about and that's interesting and that's really cool and that's really smart and and all these things but i could also feel that something was off and even though i could feel <laughs> I could feel the divine be like, no, you know, this person's not for you. I still hit that follow button and I still let her be in my feed for a little bit until I realized and I was like, oh yeah, no, this is not, this isn't actually the integrity and this is not, this is not actually the energy that I want to be exposed to. And so Maybe it was like a week or two of that. And I was like, wait, okay, unfollow. This isn't the this isn't the thing. This is not in alignment with my energy and my integrity. And I could just feel it. I could feel it so clearly. But when we are already in a space of, let's say, disempowerment or questioning ourselves or not being really certain, it's much harder to discern those kinds of things. So that's why, like I'm sharing with you. It's so important to focus on that step where we build up our spiritual strength and spiritual power back up through the focus and practice of connecting with our energy, focusing on practicing what it feels like to be in our energy, bringing divine light and love to our different chakras and things like that to just be in the familiarity of your energy. So that's going to be important. The next step after that is that you're going to start to create boundaries and start to set that intention, whether you speak it out loud or you write it down or both, but you're going to start to just focus on the boundaries and the knowing of from, from now on only energies of divine light and love. I'm only connecting with energies of divine light and love. I'm only here to be in relation with high vibrational energies with the angels, with the divine, you know, whatever you want to name, whatever it is that resonates with you, but you're kind of just setting the, the, the rules in a way for yourself, like fresh, clean start, whatever I said before, just whatever right now, this is the thing. These are my boundaries. These are my rules. This is what's happening. And I do see that coming through now more so in relationship with your guardian angels and calling upon your guardian angels and kind of making a pack together, even though they're already there to support you and protect you. But the thing that we have to understand is that we sometimes go through these types of experiences in order to empower us, in order to learn our true divine strength and our true spiritual power. And so this is part of the process. And it's not because your guardian angels are like, yeah, whatever, we'll just, just let this dark energy take over or whatever. It's just part of our free will and it's also part of our growth process. So that's important to understand with this. So as you're creating your boundaries, talk with your garden angels, let them know and come into a new kind of pact or agreement with them of this is what's going on. This is what we need to be aware of. This is what's important. This is what's allowed into my energy field. This is what I need to be aware of. And I need your support to help me to see this and to help me to understand. So ask your guardian angels to help you with that part. After that, you are going to now, you're now ready to clear out any energy out of the objects that you were using. So whether it's an Oracle card deck or other divination tool or whatever it is, if, you, if it was from a person, then you don't have to worry about that. That's on them. Uh, but just make sure that you're, you cut any cords and just release any last remaining bits or connection with them. But uh, this is the part where you're clearing out the energy out of objects specifically that you may have been using. And this includes crystals as well. So the way that you can clear out and just reset the energy, you can use sage, you can ask Archangel Gabriel to support you with it. Or if you really feel like, no, I'm done, like this is complete, then throw it out or get rid of it. So that's going to be up to you to decide if it's something that you're just like, yeah, I understand. Like, I'm just going to clear out the energy and we're good. Then do that. But like I said, if it's something that really feels like, no, I'm done with this, then throw it away, 
bury it in the earth, whatever you got to do, just release it. And again, if it's related to a person, make sure you release them energetically. Make sure that the cords are cut. Make sure that you set that boundary energetically. Like they're not coming. There's no overlap of energies here anymore. Like they're not allowed in my aura, things like that. And, and kind of having that firm boundary in that sense. Okay. But the next step is that you can clear out the energy and reset it. And this is one of the things too, that I also share. Uh, and, and I have, I talked more about this inside of my Archangel Oracle, uh, video, which I will link at the end of this video. But in there, I talked more about how you can clear a card deck specifically. And if you have the Archangel Oracle card deck, which I have over here, if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm going to show you. And if you're listening to me, well, I have the Archangel Oracle card deck. <laughs> and uh, in there, I share more about how to clear the the deck and give some tips, give some advice on how to do so uh, energetically. But you can also use things like Sage to support you. And just knowing that you can clear out energy and you can release and just reset it if that's what you feel called to do. And then once you do that, you reprogram whatever it is, whether it's the card deck or crystals or whatever, and you bring in the energy of divine light and love. You bring in the energy, you program it with the energy of integrity, the energy of truth, the energy of love, the energy of the highest frequency, the highest vibration to support the highest good. And, and so once you set that intention, you're good to go. The, the next thing that you can do is now start to work with your garden angels more closely and with the archangels and any other divine beings that you feel very connected with and comfortable with and start working with them as your guides or as your quote unquote filters for anything that you might be connecting to or working with in the future. So in the future, if you buy another Oracle card deck or in the future, if you buy a crystal or other divination tool or whatever it might be, you're using, you're leaning into your garden angels, you're leaning into the archangels and asking them, is this in alignment for my highest good? Is this an integrity? Is this something that is of divine light and love and trust in what you feel? This is why that step where I talked about your spiritual power and building up your spiritual strength, it's going to help you to discern. You're going to get much better at discerning things. But at first, you know, we, we all go through things like that. But as we grow on our spiritual journey, we get better at it. And it's about the discernment. And so you discern and you filter out and you lean into your garden angels and you lean into the archangels to help you with that. So that's most important here. Okay. And that's how you can move forward. And that's how you continue to, to, to grow and continue to expand and knowing that you get to trust yourself. So this isn't about, I think sometimes what happens is people go through these types of experiences and then they just shut everything down. Cause they're like, no way. <laughs> like I'm not letting this happen again. And here's the thing. You don't have to be afraid because you are a powerful divine being. You are connected to divine light and love. And sometimes these things happen to help us with our growth and help us with our experiences and to help us to, to, to be more discerning and to move with the highest of integrity. It's happened to me like I've shared and it's okay. It's okay. It happens and we can clear things out and come back to our true selves and knowing that the support of the divine is always there and it is always available for us to call upon to guide us and to support us. So that's the process that I want to walk you through today. Now, finally, the last thing that I want to answer is related to protection before meditation or before energy work and things like that. And yes, definitely, I recommend that you create a space of divine light and love. You create what I feel or what I see, and this is how we teach it instead of the healer program, where it's almost like this bubble of light that you create around yourself and around clients if you are a practitioner and you're working with other people. But essentially, you are creating a bubble of light and love where that's where you are, that's where you dwell, and that is the protection. 
But rather than thinking of it as protection, even though that is what it's doing, I think of it as this is the space of integrity. This is the space of the highest frequency, the highest integrity that I'm going to be in right now as I teach this or as I channel for this person or as I support someone with their healing or as I support myself with my healing and just thinking of, of it as like a room or a space that you're entering into of pure divine love, pure divine light to help support whatever it is the process is. So that's what I, that's how I think of it. I think of it as a space that you create. And I go into more in depth on that and so much more inside of the healer program where I train and certify angelic healers to be able to work with angelic energy frequency and support them in pursuing the path of their soul's calling. Uh, But that's just something for you to know that yes, you create that for yourself with your intention, with, again, Archangel Gabriel. He's the one who's coming in and supporting you to hold a space of divine truth and love as you work with different divination tools or as you work with people or as you connect and receive information and show up in that way, okay? So that is all of the information for today's episode, which I really, really loved. And also FYI that this is going to be a part one There's also part two that I want to share that is talking about spiritual protection, but from a different perspective. Part two is going to be more so how do you protect yourself from people who are judging you, who are ridiculing you, who are making fun, who are asking questions, who are doubting you? Like, how do you continue to show up in spite of that kind of negativity from the outside world? or, you know, that kind of scrutiny that can happen as we show up in our light and in our truth. So that's going to be spiritual protection part two that I want to share. So stay tuned for that episode that is going to come out next week. And I cannot wait to share more with you. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, then I would love for you to rate the show, bring in your reviews, Post it in the comments if you're watching me on YouTube. Let me know what stood out to you. Let me know which part of this maybe you didn't know before and now you're going to be able to apply it to your life. Share your experiences with me. I'd love to hear from you. So post that in the comments on YouTube or you can always reach out to me personally and let me know. But this is a space where we come together and talk about all things spirituality and deepen our divine connection. So thank you so much for tuning in and being a regular listener of this podcast. I really, truly appreciate it. The last thing that I'm going to share is if you are interested in continuing to develop your healing abilities, you are ready to step into your purpose as a healer. You're like, yes, that's who I am. I know that this is my calling. I know that this is my purpose. And you want to have a space where you are both learning and mastering your abilities, but also at the same time, understanding what your true innate gifts are and understanding how the two come together and how that is what forms your unique purpose and your soul's mission so that you're no longer questioning and doubting whether you're on the right path so that you're no longer burning out because you're doing the wrong things in the sense of that's not what your mission is. That's not what your purpose is. You are meant to be here. This is who you are. This is your natural gifts. And, and you are in a space where you're now moving forward so much momentum, ease, flow, alignment, excitement for what you're doing. And it doesn't feel so hard and heavy anymore. Come join me inside of the healer program. This is what we're doing together over the next four months. So the details for that program are in the link in the show notes. So go check it out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next episode. I am sending you so much love and angel blessings, and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. And if you want to learn more about the Divine Connection podcast, you can go to ChristinaAroche.com forward slash podcast and learn about how you can be featured on the show. 